Of course not. Guys, you must have got, uh, must have got the memo. Remember, COVID attire. This is a COVID uh, attire presentation. And uh, a bit of fun uh, aside, I'd like to formally welcome you to our ELK webinar for 30 June 2021. The 30 June 2021 period, it's a big day for us. And I'd like to thank the ELK team, but also for your time. You may have, in your own lives, had a big, big day and certainly had a, a lot to deal with in, in a midweek. There's no state of origin and, and Queensland's lost that anyway, so it's not too much of an interest to me, to be honest. Uh, but there's plenty of sport on at the moment. Uh, uh, Tour de France, the European Championships for football, the South American Championships, which honestly, uh, <laughs> they're not worth watching. Shout out to my South American friends if they are indeed signed in. But guys, back to the ELK webinar. And with that, what we're here to talk about this evening. So uh, we're here to talk about something that's really important to ELK and therefore really important to you because we look at it in your eyes. And there's two streams that we're gonna focus on. Those streams are premium financial services. And as, as, a, as a comment, you might think, well, what's that? What's it mean to me? That's exactly right. We're gonna get into what that means to you. So premium financial services, what is it and why should you care? And then we'll get the numbers and particularly some headline comments. Premium financial services is stream one for today is about reducing debt, building wealth and saving tax with a simple plan because it, it should all be simple. And then how do you manage that? Because for the benefit of, um, well, the benefit of being in business and in operation as an enterprise for so long, being 16 years now, we've got to meet a lot of people. And so through their journey, as a strategy structure and solution, people might have seen or heard perhaps snippets of this. But when we built this, we wanted to start with the right foundation. So when we got our webinar presentation, we want to start with the right foundation. One that people can relate to. One that's relevant to all working Australians. And that's what we're dealing today. So we'll look at it in terms of a client journey. Where they, where they start and then where they get to, eventually for the purpose of hitting that, that goal, that, that, that primary objective. There's milestones along the way, of course. And so at each point of what I've talked tonight, you better say, well, wait a second, I might be about there. And then to make sure you get the maximum value from your time, relate to that. Look at it in terms of your numbers and what can you take away from that? This is a webinar. So uh, with that, there's interactions, there's live questions at the end and we encourage you to do that. At the same time, we'd really love to, to meet you one-on-one, -on -one, to talk to you in that personal environment where you, you've got the confidence to be able to share with us anything you'd like to discuss and we can go, go from there. Of course, we can dive deep. So the premium financial service is about reducing debt, building wealth and saving tax as part of a simple plan that has a strategy, structure and solution. And we're going to go into the detail of that. That's stream one. We're going to then continue to stream two because part of premium financial services is looking at a person's total financial world. So a circle and that total financial world is then cutting to two parts and I'm a bit tired here because uh, I'm sitting at the moment, but I might map it out. Imagine and hopefully one of my good mates, Ben, he gets the tune in. He's one of our uh, very dear clients to us, been with us for a long time. <laughs> he makes a joke that when he listens to the Elk Radio Elk TV, he's often uh, getting chastised by his partner for drawing circles around the house. Maybe that's the influence we have, but guys, Imagine your total financial world is a circle and you cut it down the middle. It's comprised of two parts. We call that part 1.1, which is your personal world, the left-hand side. And part 1.1a, the right-hand side, being your super world. So with the super financial world, that's going to be stream two. Because super is an important vehicle to future-proof yourself. And you need to take control of it. In actual fact, as of tomorrow, 1st of July, the superannuation guarantee contribution converts to 10%. So it's really important you do look to take control of your super. Further to that, we'll then look at what are, you, what are your options? And for us, the smart way to invest in property is to use your super. So the two streams of the summary, because I'd like to make sure you understand clearly what we're gonna go through this evening. The agenda for the webinar is premium financial services and what's it mean to you? What's it look like? Then from there, uh, presentation stream two, taking control of your super, future-proofing yourself, and specifically, the 
the smart way to invest in property using super. So on that basis, I'm sure I have you with that. I'm going to proceed to, um, to drill down from there. So presentation stream number one. And, and through this evening, I'll be referring to presentations. I'll bring our presentation number one up now. Guys, if you know me, I don't like to be tied down and, and looking through and, and reading. You're not going to get that. There's nothing prescribed. I'm going to talk to points on the presentation and then really paint a picture. And hopefully from there, you can adopt and take your numbers and apply that. The key thing I hope you get from today, and why don't we go to that in terms of the agenda uh, of present, uh, presentation number one, and that starts with why should you listen to us? Why Elk? So why Elk for a number of reasons. We've been in place in, as an enterprise for 16 years. My wife's favorite number in actual fact, 16 years. And we're planning on continuing to grow and help as many people as possible, because that's our why. Our why is to get to know you, to really understand your numbers, to help you know your numbers, because you need to know your numbers. Once you know your numbers, that then allows you to go, well, wait a second, you can measure it, especially for our existing elk clients. They've started their journey with us recently or some many years ago. And you've got to continue to measure, review, manage, and own those numbers. And one opportunity, what a time to do that. There's opportunity everywhere. And as part of a simple plan, you can do that and you can do that effectively. So why Elk in, in continuum is Elk's a holder of an Australian financial services license. We're the holder of an Australian credit license. And we hold a licensed real estate agency across Queensland and New South Wales. So that means that that collection of licenses allows us to understand your total financial world. Drill down on the left-hand side, your personal, and the right-hand side, your super. And then look at what you need to do. And that comes with a lot of expertise. But what's it going to mean? Is it means we're going to help you reduce debt, build wealth, grow your asset pool, and save tax along the way. With a simple plan you understand, you can continue to manage. So on that, let me share my screen, please. And what you should be seeing is Elk Webinar, Premier Financial Services, what I've made comment on. Uh, just a, a few formalities, if that's all right. I've touched on Elk. Ian, me, who's Ian Kebblewhite? Well, I'm the Managing Director and Founder of Elk. Been doing this for over 20 years. You can tell by uh, the look on my face that I've been doing this for a long time, or, or my face and the wear and tear. Five children, a business that does it to you. But you know what? We love what we do. Uh, we looked at our why proposition, our why uh, to what we do. And I wouldn't be doing it testing if I didn't just round it off. We want to help people change their lives. As part of knowing your numbers, you then can start to direct your cash flow with intention. So tonight in our presentation, as I flow through this, you'll see we've taken a case study. And that case study is based on an existing your client, their numbers. And then we've given them given descriptions. So you better say, well, that's my number. Uh, so my income's this and the case study was this. Okay, I can see that. Then look at what it means to you. So if you know your numbers, we can then start to put in place a plan. And that plan should be focused on, well, most people want to achieve the goal of the great Australian dream, home ownership. That comes with a mortgage. That's expensive. Rates are very low at the moment. You need to review them. But at the same time, it is expensive. Banks make a big profit and it's for a reason. So how can you reduce debt as quickly as possible? But then can you save for your retirement with the cost of living? And cost of living is expensive. So understanding your expenses and the economics of that helps us direct your cash flow with intention. Identify saving opportunities and do what can you do with that? From there, we then will, what other options are available to you to continue to get ahead? Because whilst you're working hard to earn the money, and I'll touch on this now. So we're looking at your total financial world, remember? And we're going to divide that down in the middle. This is all going to be about the left-hand side. Part 1.1, your personal financial world. Part 1.1a, your super financial world, that will come next. That's if I don't get cut off by the producer, Daryl, for going on for too long. You can see this means a lot to me. We do love what we do. And this is, this is our sweet spot. For me, Harry Kuehl was one of the best soccer players in Australia. I played with him. This is what I do best. 
and we want to share that with you. So looking at your total financial world and looking at the personal side, then inside that, and some people say the best part of my head is the back of it. So just bear with me for a sec. Left, right, we're looking at this side. So in here, imagine another circle. So that circle represents your household. It's your corporation, it's Corporation U. And that is a revenue center as well as a cost center. So as a revenue center, that's where your money comes in. So just for a moment, think about that. What is your total income from personal exertion? And then what are the costs that come out? Tax, mortgage or accommodation costs, cost of living, rent, and then expenses. There might be some left over. There might be some going to consumer credit. There's a number of things that affect Australian households. Consumer credit's one of them. The cost of living's another. The financial aspects, mortgage, tax, retirement, not dealing with that. So you need to be able to get across those things, which we'll do. And those, that cost center costs you a lot of money. And if you don't deal with it and deal with a plan, then it's gonna cause a problem. And that problem is the white elephant in the room or the white elk, if you like, um, your retirement and not having what you need for your retirement. So when was the last time you saved half a million dollars? The shortfall that you may be posed with, maybe more. So to then look at what you need to do and how do you fix that? Well, that's about growing your asset pool. So having a strategy, it always starts with a strategy. You've got to know what you're doing and why you're doing it, where you want to get to. What am I trying to achieve? Then understand the business case, your numbers, your corporation. Then look at the structure, how we're going to do it, and then solution. What is it? So we'll go through that in a moment. So uh, that's the why, by helping people change their lives across all those parts. Please, one important point. This tonight is not personal financial advice. We haven't taken into the accounts of all the viewers, uh, as many as there are, uh, if there is any, of course. Uh, guys, um, I like to have a bit of fun along the way, uh, mix it up. So uh, with that, on a serious note, this is not financial product advice. It's generic general advice. We'd love to speak with you so we can provide that service. So don't act on anything I'm talking about this evening. Please contact us and then obviously go from there. So we've touched on the agenda for the webinar. The agenda for this part of the presentation. What's our view on premium financial services? I think I've banged on about that enough. Case study. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the profile of a client prior to them becoming a client of Elk. The key thing that I ask that you take away from this is what are their needs, but what are your needs? And looking at it with a critical eye from the, uh, the view of issues and deficiencies. So remember, that circle up there, that's, that's your corporation. If you're not running a business with a plan, you're not running a business with a complete eye on the numbers, well, you're not running anything, and you're just trying to get through. So look at it and see, what are my issues and deficiencies? How do I fix that? At points, if you do it properly, you'll be disturbed. You look at it and go, well, wait a second, that's a lot. How do I fix that? That's more rational. The problem is it's going to be more of a feeling. Because you're working so hard to earn the money, to pay the tax, to pay the mortgage, to pay living expenses. For five kids, it's expensive and it's hard work. And every day we get it back on, on the horse, strap on the feed bag before that, and then go out there and do it again. So looking at those numbers, the good thing is that you can fix it. You can take steps to fix it. And that's where it starts to uh, get a bit more exciting. We look at the structure, the strategy, and the solution or strategy structure and solutions that we've delivered to that, that client, we've delivered to countless amounts of clients. It's all personal and tailored, but there's a foundation to it. And there's a proven strategy, and then the structure, and then the solution maps out to the, the, the person's numbers from there. If you're motivated by that, by the benefits, and you should be, well, hey, come and meet with us. But I'm going to be looking at part 1.1 there. At that point, I'm going to move to part 1.1a. Look at your super. Because that's premium financial services. Not just a mortgage broker looking at one part or a financial advisor looking at another part. Uh, a lot of real estate agent who doesn't consider any of that just looks at the asset and selling it or managing it. And when you've got property as an asset, you need to drive the rolling. You need to drive the return on investment. So you need to deal with people and understand 
the principles in investing to get that, to get that right. Manage the property like it's our own, but drive those numbers. So that's the agenda for this part. Thank you. Okay, so we've talked about premium financial services. We'll move on from that. Case study. So guys, we've taken a, a house view and looked at what an average typical client looks like before joining Elk or becoming a member of Elk or a client of Elk. Now your numbers or people that are watching, the numbers may vary either side of that. That's good, that they're your numbers. And this is certainly not a qualifying criteria. It's not a parameter. It's simply a snapshot. You might be young, you may be older. And as long as you've, you're positive and keen to get ahead, we would love to hear from you. In this is a snapshot with someone who's 45. Their retirement age is 67, that's the retirement age now. So what's gonna happen is if people don't have enough money, they have to work for longer. If you don't have what you need, you have to work for longer. Years to retirement, 22. Let's just jump down a bit and look at the years remaining on the mortgage, 25 years. And it's not abnormal to see a situation on owner occupied where years to retirement is less than years on mortgage. And then you look at the exit strategy, perhaps accelerated payments if they've got the cash flow to, or perhaps using some of their super proceeds. In this situation, it's likely that they'll pay off that mortgage in, in 22 years by paying a bit extra along the way. But rates are really low at the moment. And they're not always gonna stay like this. I remember when, I've been doing this for a long time, that the rates were eight, nine, 10%. And the average variable rate for Australia was 7.8%. And people identified then it was a right time and there was a need to do something. And that was to take control back from the bank and put in place a more effective structure and direct their cash flow to pay down debt more quickly. And I'll, I'll point to that in just a moment. But imagine then growing your asset pool. You've got rates at that level. Well, that's okay because done properly, borrowing can be tax deductible and that can give you a tax saving. And so one of the challenges people have at the moment is saving tax in a low interest rate environment. And if you don't have the right kind of strategy, the right type of asset, you'll leave money on the table. So back to uh, the, the, the client profile. Total household income per annum, 165,000. Now that's comprised of 130,000 for one applicant or one client and another being 35,000. So the couple combined 165,000. Your mix may be different. Your mix might just be single, that's fine. So these are their numbers. Now, when you look at this, imagine that cost center as a pie and the money comes in. It's a revenue center, so there's money coming in revenue. That in comes from your personal exertion. That personal exertion is from your working. And unless you're doing something else, well, you can't really, unless you're actually doing something else that's gonna drive income, you probably can't work, work anymore to get any extra money. And that 165,000 equates to $55,000 a year in tax. So my questions are, what are you doing to fix that? What was a client doing to fix that? Was your accountant helping them proactively? And the answers in those instances were no. So looking forward, it's the 30th of June. I don't wanna look backwards, I don't look forward, 1st of July. Have a strategy in place for the new financial year. In this instance, the client's home value was $900,000 and their mortgage, 400,000. So 900 versus 400. I've got a graphic to show in a moment that will help you understand these numbers. <laughs> I have a number of people, clients, that don't really get numbers. They get the words, I love numbers and numbers love me. That's my mantra. Can we get you to, to say that? So own occupied value, 900. Mortgage 400. What that means is there's a fair bit of equity there. The great Australian dream of home ownership is also the last tax free asset. You don't pay tax on that. Now, in this situation, that money wasn't working for them though. They had no other assets, nothing else working for them to help them try and do something with that equity. Unfortunately, there was just a standard term loan as well. So that's a home loan that didn't have an offset account. And we see that where clients still, and people we meet, and no matter how much you see on TV or hear about offset accounts, it's not always used or used the way it should. Firstly, people seem to view their transactional bank account as their bank, not their 
where the home loan is. That's okay. But we'll see where someone's got a home loan at lender A and a bank account at bank B, and they've got all their cash flow, all their savings sitting there and not attached to their home loan. Interest on loans is calculated daily and debited monthly. So the more cash flow, more regularly you put through and against your home loan, the less interest you pay. It doesn't matter if you don't have large amounts of savings. Put the cash flow through it and against it and get that compounding effect working for you rather than working so dearly against you. In this instance, that home loan of 400,000 had a 25 year term and the rate was 3.21%. Monthly payment of about 1,941. So that client, the client, yourselves, earn the money, comes in. The first thing is you pay the tax. Now, you might have a strategy in place to save some tax. But in the most instance, especially in a low interest rate environment, there still be tax you're paying and ways to try and save that and do better by managing it and driving it. And if you don't have any strategy, well, you're paying a lot and you're not taking advantage of tax minimization advantages that are available to you. Because they're available to you to help you fund your retirement. Retirement isn't just super, it's any asset for your retirement for the purposes of future-proofing yourself. And to get those assets, you've got to grow your asset pool. Otherwise you can save for your retirement, but when's the last time you saved half a million dollars or thereabouts? Especially when you've earned the money, paid such a large amount of tax, paid your mortgage, got this much left over for living, living's quite expensive, and what's left over? Well, it's not enough. So how do you fix that? And we'll go to that in just a sec, but before we do, there's a few more things to discuss. In this instance, the average living expense was about four and a half grand a month, 54,000 per annum. So fixed and discretionary, that means there's some money left over. That money could have been directed better and living expenses was a part of where it went. There was money being saved, and by paying more to your mortgage, that's one way to get rid of that home loan a bit quicker. In this instance, they needed to, so they'll have the ability to do that and get it back and cleared to a 22 year term. But the glaring thing is interest rate 3.21. So to do our Elk Loans interest rate challenge, let us see what you're currently paying. Use that as a benchmark. From there, we'll speak with your incumbent funder. See what the best rate is they can provide. Please understand, no matter how good your rate was 18 months ago, and for our clients, the structure is always sharp. The rates are always as sharp as possible, if not the sharpest and best available. But where funding's got to, where lending's got to, is there is a complete disconnection between existing home loan rates and new lending rates. So the current market sees rates of well, twos for the variable rate and ones, a one in front for fixed rate which means we could save 1% plus in this scenario. That's thousands of dollars. What's that mean to you? So speak with Elk, let us see how we can help you there. Continuing along. As I said in their balance sheet, so what we're looking at here is a statement of financial position and a statement of financial performance. I encourage you to do that. Look at your numbers. Look at your assets, their value, the loans. Look at your equity, the true position of it, and see what that looks like. Then see, what that will mean to you going forward and whether there's any issues or deficiencies. The situation we're seeing here is they've got or had no existing investment property or investment assets other than their super. So there's no investment property and the only real asset they held on their balance sheet as a financial asset was super. The key point there is besides the super, the client had no access to open market forces. So whilst their home was going up in value, that's where you live. And as their home was going up in value, so was everywhere else. So come retirement, their home's about the average of their location or that uh, state or city they live in. So they can't really sell and downsize and take equity. They might better get a bit, but they'll have to downsize or move further afield. And that might help top things up for their super. But that's not a strategy. You need to have a plan in place that allows you to deal with those issues, not try and continually try and react and manage. And 250,000 is super, well, have a look at it from your perspective. And I know that some of our Elk members and clients will certainly be aware of where the money is invested and what it's doing. And we're really proud of that. There are others, and there are certainly others that aren't Elk clients that go, well, wait a second, I know the fund name, 
I don't know where it's invested. I might know it's a balanced portfolio or a growth. So it might be Sun Super or Q Super, balanced or growth or their equivalent. But I don't know where the money's invested today. And when we look at their financial position, that's the biggest asset on their balance sheet. If it was in the bank, you would have looked at money this morning and probably just after lunch. 250,000 or equivalent 100,000, no matter what it is, it's one of, gonna be one of your biggest financial assets. Know what it's doing, take control of it. And in a moment, I'll touch on the fact that $1 in every $10 you own, so 10%, and $1 in every 10 you spend is going towards super, it's your money. Know where it is, know what it's doing for you. Now, in a household with a couple and two children, which was their profile, their profile, um, there was minimal life insurance and minimal other insurances. Personal risk protection is a very important thing. And whilst we don't set out to uh, sell or provide insurance, that's not what we do. Uh, we have an obligation to make sure you understand your risk, your financial numbers, and what you need to protect yourself. That may be just if you're working and have a household to support. That income's your biggest asset. Then you've got perhaps obligations, liabilities, debt, and you've got to provide for your children for your future or for your household. Future-proofing, as much as it is planning and growing your asset pool, it's about protecting and managing against risk and mitigating it. And personal risk protection is important to that. And you can do that in a, in a, in a way that suits your circumstances and uses the benefit of personal world, super world to get it right. And certainly not for the purpose of adding expense, but the purpose of protection. Purpose of protection. So in that super, they're receiving 15,675 per annum in contributions. Growing to 10%, it's gonna go up a bit. So that's 9.5% of their gross income growing to 10%. It's a good number. Looking at what that means though, 250,000 projecting out for 22 years plus their contribution, we're still gonna be short of what they required for their retirement. That's some other assets in the form of shares and some credit card debt. So credit card debt is the spawn on society and eliminating and getting rid of consumer credit debt is a critical part to getting ahead. Rates are too high and it just limits your ability to really direct your cash flow and free up your surplus cash flow. So can you consolidate that? Then can you get a credit card limit, for example, and you may already be doing this, uh, but if you aren't, get a limit that matches your expenses, then clear it. Just important to get rid of consumer credit debt. Okay, so we've looked at a statement of financial position, a statement of financial performance. When you look at yours, what do you think? So when you look at your statement of financial performance, your income, the tax, and your expenses, can you do better in any of those ways, in any of those parts? Income, you may be limited or you may be at your maximum personal exertion. So then in your expenses, what well, can you reduce the tax? Can you get access to other income? Can you look at the expenses and save money and then direct that? because that's what it takes over and over again to get ahead. And it's not hard, I'm not trying to make it sound hard, but if you don't fix it, it becomes a problem and it may well be already. And you need to take steps to fix it and then manage it. And then the statement of financial position, well, looking at your, and in this situation, your asset pool, you had a home, and that home was a lifestyle asset, so it can't be included in your, your investment assets or funds for retirement, and the expensive home loan. And, there's nothing else working for you other than your super. And what that projects out to be is a number that's short. So what it projects to be in terms of value is short of what you need it to be. So with that, what that means guys is there's issues and deficiencies that need to be fixed and continually managed. And what I've got in front of us is what those issues are. So back to my whiteboard drawing up here, total financial wall, personal financial wall, part 1.1. In there, revenue cost center, that equals the circle you're seeing, the colorful pie chart on that screen. That revenue center had 165,000 of total income. There was no other income coming in. Just that. Good household income, albeit. Look at the size of the pie. Look at the number. $55,000 a year in tax. We see clients that pay much more tax than that. We see clients that pay less. Tax serves a purpose. Certainly serves a purpose at the moment. Supports us. 
uh, as an Australian country with what we're dealing with COVID. Uh, at the same time, do you share and then be smart about it? And can you save some of that tax? Tax buyer, can you reduce some of that? So take some of that back and get it to work for you. How do you do that? We'll show you. And then, so you earn the money, comes in, you pay the tax. What comes out next is your mortgage payment. That mortgage is expensive. 23 grand a year. 23 grand a year for the next 25 years is $582,000. Guys, I've seen numbers much bigger than that. That number is not too bad in the scheme of things. Why? Because rates are so low. You need to prepare now. Take action now to get in front of that. Rates will go back up. Look at your opportunities to reduce your rates. Look at your opportunities to fix, if applicable. Consider your circumstances, because if you fix, you need to break, there's an economic cost. But save money now and put that towards principal debt reduction. Or set it aside and save it. Eliminate some consumer credit debt with it. But understand, as mortgage rates rise, that total mortgage cost, your total mortgage cost will increase. So you earn the money, pay the tax, pay the mortgage. Now, what's that? It, it's a problem because it's a total tax paid to pay your mortgage and a total mortgage cost to, to simply just get a debt-free home. So what do those numbers mean? And then how do you calculate it for yourself? Okay. So in your world, look how much tax you pay each year, each week, each year. Look at your PAYG summary you're about to get or your tax return you're about to lodge and see how much you're paying. Well, could have I done anything? Could I really have done something different to deal with that? Some of you might have done as all you can. Well, great, let's continue to manage it. And when the opportunity presents, can we do some more? Because that tax each year for the next 20 years, in the instance of our client, 22 years, or 25 years, because they have to work for longer to pay back their mortgage. So the total tax to pay between now and retirement or now and pay back your mortgage. In this instance, 55 grand a year. Total tax paid during the term of the mortgage. So if you follow down, home value, mortgage. They pay the mortgage. Total tax paid during mortgage term, 1,486,000. My goodness. $1.4 million. It's a lot of tax. And could we save some of that and put it to work for ourselves? And you can. You can, as long as you do something, of course, you can't just do it, take it back. You've you got to have a strategy. You've got to have a, a reason for advantages. That means the total mortgage cost and total tax paid by our client, perhaps by yourselves, to simply pay off your home loan is over $2 million. So my question is, don't look at those numbers. Look at yours. How does that make you feel? And with that, it should be an emotional response because this is a daily thing. You're doing it daily. You're working hard. You're paying, earning the money to pay the tax, pay your mortgage. You're trying to get ahead. You might see, and historically, clients that have been with us for some time, had mortgages for longer, will know that the principal component of any mortgage was much lower previously. In this instance, and previously because people have been able to continue with their current or historical mortgage payments, and the interest component is low so what that means is more of their payments going towards principal whereas as payments grow you've still got a scheduled term of say 25 years so say you've got a 25 year loan term just to amortize your debt so they work out how they pay that off in the 30 years the principal component the interest component can often be a lot more than the principal because rates has, have historically been much higher so fix it while you can, so correct it. Don't just fix your rate, correct it while you can to try and reduce the compounding effect of interest. Interest on loans is calculated daily and debited monthly. You can see why. Because if rates go up, that figure of 582,000 becomes 700,000 total payback. 900,000 or about double, 800 grand if the rates go back to where they were. And the thing that we haven't looked at yet, we haven't got, to that as part of our next slide is we haven't looked at your retirement or this person's retirement. So they're gonna work their backsides off 
get to have a debt-free home when they're 67, exerted all that, that energy, that effort, got that debt-free home, and then go, well, wait a second, I don't have enough for retirement. If you don't do something. And that means they're super, maybe working for them. But given the, the quantum, the amount they have to start with, there's only so much that money can do over 20 odd years. There's only so much $250,000 can do. And it's going to get to a certain point. And that means that they're going to have to work for longer to have what they need for their entire post retirement period. So near the remainder of their life, they can, they can live for less. That will solve it. Or they can decide to have more money and put in place what they need. Otherwise, I'll have a shortfall. So guys, this is what those numbers look like in terms of retirement. So the first part was, how's it feel? This is very much uh, rational, logic. It's business case, business plan stuff or planning. So currently, the current retirement provisions. So all they had for their retirement provisions, so super. Super's an asset class. It's a it's simply a retirement savings plan with gener generous super, sorry, generous tax benefits. Retirement provisions could be other assets, property, etc. So if you have that, look at the equity and then project out reasonably where that'll get to. And property values have certainly changed historically. Uh, so they've grown. Property as an asset class has been the best performing asset in Australia for the last 20 years. Some regions of Australia the Sydney and the Melbourne, their price points are well and truly over a million bucks. As those prices have risen, whereas in areas such as Greater Brisbane, the metropolis that is Northern New South Wales to Sunshine Coast out to Greater Springfield and beyond that triangle, it's had good growth. Gold Coast and other parts, Sunshine Coast and parts of Brisbane had very good growth. At the same time, within 30 kilometres of, of Brisbane, for example, that concentric ring, so if you've got Brisbane in the middle, concentric rings around it, um, within 30 Ks or thereabouts of that, you've got assets that are still very well valued, very well priced as compared to the other major cities on the Eastern Seaboard. My point is that those assets have they reached much greater heights already. They will be more susceptible to cyclical changes, the property cycles. And so when you look at your equity position, make sure you're realistic with future growth. We look at it from a, positive, neutral, and negative outlook. And we apply those numbers and see, hey, it's still in any of those scenarios better than not doing anything because if it's the right type of asset done properly, well, there's other benefits, which we'll touch on in a moment. So the current retirement provisions are 250,000. I've got the numbers there, how we got to that, 195 and 55. So off to the right of your screen, you'll see superannuation calculators. What that grew to, is $907,000. So equating that to today's dollars, that's $907,000. That makes sense to me. And some rule of thumb to help you. If your super or if an investment compounds and receives 7.2% per annum each year for 10 years, it's gonna double in value. So 250 becomes 500. 500 comes a mil. And you can see those numbers and then we're rightly so allowed for inflation, 2% conservative. What's it mean in today's dollars? 907,000 is what they're gonna have equivalent of. People who retire today, remember back uh, when I was living in Northern New South Wales, Kingscliff, we're now in Gold Coast Southern Beaches and uh, in around the Talabudra location, beautiful part of the world. Uh, we had a client, a friend who asked me after they'd done most of their stuff to look at how transitioning, helping them for the retirement. They had about that, about a million bucks, a bit more in actual fact, closer to 1.2 today. And they were really concerned about whether that was gonna be enough for them. And that's the situation. So those numbers are accurate to today. That, that means, well, there's gonna be a shortfall. In 20 years time, there's gonna be a shortfall for your retirement. So we've done a couple of examples of what you need. So amount required at retirement at the moment, and then tying it back. So looking 20 years ahead and tying it back to today's dollars. So they're all relative. Projected super savings, 907,000. What they're gonna require is 1.24 mil. How do we get to that? Well, cross check one. The average retirement 
uh, needs, retirement income of uh, Australian households, retiring households, is $62,000 per annum. So if they retire at the age of 67, they live for about 20 years in retirement, average or expected um, living age. That means they need 1.24 mil. Cross-check that again. And how we do that is, well, we'll go, well, 62 grand. So this, the, the numbers were about 57 to 62. 57 is historical. That's back about five to 10 years ago. Cost of living has forced that income up. Divide that into four and a half percent. So what's the return you might get on that money? So if you had 1.2, 1.3, you get about four and a half percent. What would you need for the amount to be to get that 62 grand? And you needed about 1.37 million to get about 60 odd grand in income, returning, if, if your investment, if that money you had it at retirement was returning four and a half percent. Now, when we looked at that number, we had a couple of concerns because at the moment, where do you get four and a half percent from? If you're 67 retired and you're not in cash or cash equivalent. So what I mean by that is, as you get closer to retirement age, you need to look at, well, can you afford a, to have any impact or loss of that capital? So you need to, as you get closer, so if you're retiring here and you're going your merry way closer to retirement, this is what the peel things back a bit. Bring your risk profile and your investment mix back a bit. You can't continue to chase the seven or 8% returns because that capital reduction, and I've been through, through the global financial crisis in the lead up to it, uh, we had people that I knew, not elk clients, people that actually worked at Westpac and their sh super took a hit and they had to work for another few years to recover that money. So peel it back a bit. And so if you peel it back out of the usual suspects of Australian shares, international shares, listed property, those types of things, where you've got cash, fixed interest, you're not getting those rates and, and fixed interest, you might get close. Cash is certainly not. I had a laugh the other day where I saw a an offer come out from a major bank. Hey, give us your term deposit for six months. We'll give you 0.4%. Um, no, no, thank you. I'll do something else for my money. But that's the problem. Will you get 4.5% when will you get that? And what would it look like? So typically though, on average, you should be able to achieve that in those kind of fixed interest or equivalent or term deposit type funds. What they average out to be is about $1.3 million. So if we're needing 1.3 and we've got 900, there's a shortfall of $400,000. So remembering back, just click back one, two million's going out the door in tax and mortgage. And we've got a shortfall of 400 for retirement. What do you think about that? doesn't make sense. Can I save tax? Can I reduce my mortgage? Can I then direct some of that towards this? Or can I do something that allows me to plug that shortfall and also fix those other issues? Absolutely. To do that, so this is the exciting part. You need to take control back from the bank. And you need to put in place a simple model, a simple plan. Now, in terms of the diagram there, the full client model, let me just describe that and let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a structure, strategy and solution that allows you to reduce debt, build wealth and save tax. But it all starts in one first step, taking control back from the bank. By taking control back from the bank, you start to correct your structure. So in this instance previously, where there was a, a term loan without unlimited free redraw, without a fully transactional 100% offset account, there was no structure. So we fix that. We take control back from the bank. We refinance. We reduce the rates. We consolidate consumer credit debt if applicable. If you've already got, so let me just say, if you're looking at that full client, want to go, wait a second, I've got the home. I've actually got a couple of investment vehicles. Great. Let's make sure the integrity of your structure is right. Interestingly enough, sometimes we have clients that are very long term that might have a friend and that friend might be a broker and that broker might say, look, I can do this for you. And they lean towards that and they let them refinance their business. And they still deal with us and other things. There was an interesting situation just recently where a smart operator, business person, 
put in place a structure of us. We refinanced their home historically a number of years ago, uh, allowed them to access equity to do something because they needed to, to save tax, build wealth, uh, grow their asset pool. It just so happened that they acquired an investment vehicle in the form of property and they plugged that into their situation. So we kept that structure beautiful. We had the, the home at lender A and the investment vehicle at lender B, completely separate. That firewall, that dotted line down the middle, that's a firewall. It's a chasm. We can't even jump, jump over it. It's, it's there to keep everything separate, to keep you in control. Now, sometimes it's appropriate on the client situation, the offer from the, the funders to keep things at one lender as long as they're standalone. And we always keep them standalone. But this broker, who was a friend, apparently an expert, then um, did the refinance thing. And it was all about rate, all about interest rate. Now rates were really sharp and just so happened to go to a, uh, a mid-sized bank. So the integrity of that structure that we put in place, which allowed them to have the right type of loan to slew an offset account to smash their debt, to, to put all their cash flow through and they did accelerate, make accelerate debt reduction, build up equity. And the asset, which was in a prime market area, we had very strong fundament, fundamentals, but it satisfied, grew over the, the medium term. So they built up equity there. They decided to uh, sell it, take that money and do something else as part of commercial, uh, for commercial reasons, they're, they were a business operator. So that was a win-win. They come time to settle and guess what? That mortgage broker, not Elk, cross collateralized. So they secured the home against the investment. And the benefit for that was, hey, you got a bit of a cheaper rate. Yeah, of course you did because, hey, the lender's in a better position. Wait a second. Hey, you've got all this equity in your home. Yeah, give us that investment property. That's not a problem whatsoever. And that's the things you need to think about. If you are a property focused investor, if you are someone who has a home and wants to try and get ahead by growing an investment property portfolio. Do not cross collateralize. Just please don't. Remain in control. Then when it comes time to sell, what it should look like is, hey, the asset's worth X, the loan's worth Y, that equity's mine, I get that, it's a simple process. Not, hey, got to break the cross collateralization, get a valuation on the home. The bank goes, wait a second, hey, that 100 grand, we want 20 of it to pay down this debt. That's the thing that they can do. So keeping it standalone, as you can see in our structure. But let's not jump, let's ignore where it says balanced investment vehicle on the full client model. Just look at the home. Take control back. Put in place a structure that allows you to have a term loan with unlimited free redraw and a fully transactional 100% offset account. And that offset account allows you to put as much cash flow as regularly as possible through and against that loan. And you go, well, wait a second, the offset account works well because it, if I can put more cash flow through it, I can save some interest on my home loan. Home loan, offset. So no matter what the balance is, more cash flow going against it saves you interest. Yeah, well, why don't you put money, more money in it? And the response will be, well, I don't, I can't. Well, you can, you're just not doing it at the moment. And for some, again, we'll talk about what it looks like if you are doing that and how you need to continue to manage it and direct it but you would have started here. And even if you've got a strategy that has investment vehicles, are you directing your cash flow through your offset account? Because back to, I love circles, back to that pie chart. You earn the money to pay the tax, to pay the mortgage. So you pay the tax to pay the mortgage. Well, what's that mean? You pay your mortgage in after tax dollars. So it's not tax deductible. A home loan is not tax deductible. Therefore, it's expensive. So your interest payment actually allows for the home loan interest. And on the slice of money you've took to put, to put towards your mortgage, how much tax you pay on that? So it actually increases your interest rate, your true cost of funds. So therefore, paying back your debt as quickly as possible is really important and getting access to a cash flow where possible to do that is important. But there's limitations on what people can do, personal exertion for extra income. So you gotta try and look at what your options are. And then go, wait a second, how do I even do that? I've got minimal savings, I might have some savings, and if you do have savings, park it in your offset, put it in your home loan, get rid of the most expensive debt in your life. 
So you go, well, what are my options? Well, the options are, in this instance, equity. The smart way. Not cross-capitalizing, not using all of it, just looking at, like our full client monographic shows, a portion of equity. And taking a portion of the equity and saying, well, what can I use that for? And forget the balanced investment vehicle on the right-hand side for a second. What are your options? There's savings, so you could try and take that money, borrow it, to invest in savings, fixed interest, doesn't work. You get 0.4%. You pay tax on that, by the way. So the money you earn as interest is taxable versus borrowing money to do that. Put a line through that. There's property. Property as an asset class certainly meets the right criteria or meets the business case criteria. Doesn't necessarily meet the right criteria as a property asset, but property is an asset class. It has income, tax savings, again, if it's the right type of property, and growth over the medium to long term. So let's put a note next to that and just look at that, put a green next to that and go, okay, well, let's look at that a bit closer. So we have a traffic light system in our business. Green light, okay, let's look at it. Amber, no, not the moment, or red, no. Red light to savings, green to property. Then shares, they're the three assets. They're the three asset classes. And so shares allows you to well, get access to dividends. They're paid at the company or the board of directors discretion. They can change. Whilst there's franking credits for shares, the tax minimization advantages aren't often as great or as much and aren't as much as property, but still there's tax benefits. And then there's growth certainly over the medium to long term. Of note, the ASX, the Australian Stock Exchange and Russell Investments, one of the biggest uh, funds managers in Australia, have been doing reports regularly and annually for some time. Looking back 20 years, looking back 10 years, what's the best performing asset in Australia for Australian citizens, Australian investors, and direct residential property has been the best asset for the last 20 years, the last 10 years. And amongst that mix of good assets, performing assets is certainly shares and shares are favorable to a lot of people. But would you borrow against your home to invest in that? I wouldn't, I would not ever in, in consider that or present that to any of our customers or clients. Shares certainly has a place with savings. Shares is a place in your super. And can you direct your surplus cash flow? or can you direct savings, but not to borrow money to invest in, because why? Well, the best example is banks will lend you 50 to 60% of the value of a share. They'll only lend you, here I am bouncing around over the place. <laughs> I'll knock the table over in a minute. Um, is it coming through? Hopefully the passion is coming through. I, we like what we do here. 50 to 60% is what they'll lend against the value of shares. 80% more, 90, in actual fact, they'll end up to 97% of properly valued property. What that means is property is a smoother ride, has less volatility. So we've put an amber next to shares for your personal, because we know, hey, in your super world, yeah, that's green to go. Or in your personal savings, as long as you don't have consumer credit debt and your home loan is being looked after, yeah, look at an opportunity there, an exchange traded fund, uh, looking at, regular contributions to a savings or investment account from rounding up those little things to try and offset what you spend. We can talk about that separately individually. That's not gonna, that's not gonna change your world. So we go, well, property, but only if it meets the right kind of criteria. And from there, some of that criteria, just a snapshot, is it's got a firstly value for bank mortgage purposes. Then the fundamental criteria of the asset which I won't go too, too much into at the moment, as a snapshot, has to be a balanced investment vehicle. It has to have the right mix of rental income, yield, tax savings. So one of the things about property is that it has built-in tax deductions, depreciation. It has built-in non-cash deductions, depreciation, and then growth over the medium to long term, and that's shown. Now, people might think, oh, I've had an asset for eight years, 10 years, it's only done this. Property is a long-term asset. And in actual fact, RP Data put a report out a little while ago called the RP Data Pain and Gain Report. What that report focused on is what does the what, what does property do over the long term? And what's the optimum time between 
pain and gain. Well, there's gain at the moment. There's gain has been gained historically, but certainly at the moment, uh, it's a, an, a great time to own assets. And you're seeing in markets around Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, particularly Southeast Queensland, well, those markets are growing. But it was about 12 years plus. And the best time to hold a property is, the best period is about 20 odd years to get the maximum gain, the, ma the maximum profit selling situation. So property is a long-term asset. It's a liquid, it takes three months to sell. Not so much at the moment, but that means you've got to have built in liquidity into your plan. You've got to keep some cash aside uh, and make sure in any situation, if you need to, you can sell. And that's why keeping it separate keeps you in control. So we've identified property as an asset. We know it has certain fundamentals and criteria it must satisfy. And that will be another webinar. But from there we go, well, how do we even do it? How do we integrate an asset like that? Well, we do some backward planning. We keep your home at lender A and we start all the way over here and go, well, what can you afford? Not maximum, what's your comfortable purchasing of an affordability range? And we build that based on funder, bank criteria, our intimate knowledge and servicing calculators to determine what's your maximum purchasing capacity. That's built on two things, affordability from cash flow, as well as available proceeds. So the sources and use of the funds, where's my deposit coming from? How much have I got? How much can I afford on that basis? So let's just say the average price point and let's just say the market, that metropolis of Northern New South Wales, the Southeast, Southeast Queensland, Northern New South Wales, Sunshine Coast, out of Greater Springfield, that triangle and everywhere in between, if it's the right type of prime market area built on that criteria, is about $500,000 as an investment vehicle. Will you integrate that $500,000 property by borrowing some money against it? Now, remembering banks will lend you up to 97% of properly valued property. You don't need to go to that necessarily if you've got enough equity, that purple square you see on your screen for the purposes of a deposit and cost contribution. So the backward planning starts at 80%. Why? Because 80% is a magic number. 80% is a lending loan to value ratio. So the property value at 500 by 80% is 400. That means 20%, $100,000 has to come from somewhere. In that instance, the deposit came from the home. Critically though, that property, that acquisition is an asset. It's valued. It's valued at 500, it's 500. It's loan at 400, it's 400. That 100 grand isn't just whacked onto your home loan, no. So we have in your home loan situation, a home loan, which is non-tax deductible debt. That's home loan split, A. And then we have investment split, B. That's tax deductible debt. Wow, wait a second, you can do that? Yes. Tax deductible debt means that asset's used for purposes to get ahead, to grow your asset pool. And for that, you get tax minimization advantages, tax savings. The interest you pay is tax deductible. So you allow for deposit, some costs. Now, again, specifically, we're getting the investment vehicle uh, parameters. We can eliminate costs, you can reduce stamp duty, and we can produce some very beautiful business cases where you maximize your tax deductions, minimize your stamp duty, and are in urban locations that are around 500 or plus because markets are on the move. That takes a lot of work, a lot of expertise. That's what Elk does. We do stuff off market, we find it off market, and we present it to you. So with that, we've then integrated an investment vehicle with 500,000 onto the client's balance sheet. So remember that statement of financial position before? There was nothing else working for them. Well, now they've got an asset worth 500,000 on that balance sheet. That balance sheet now looks a whole lot healthier because whilst the home loan is still only 400, and they've used say 110, 115,000 of deposit and cost funds. And we put, we put a loan limit of 125,000. Why? To give you about 10 to 15 grand buffer, that head on pillow at night type of thing, some surplus cash flow, depending on your numbers, of course. Um, so if anything happens, and one of my favorite questions that I receive is, what if it's not rented? Well, there's so many levers you can pull if it's not rented, it's not funny. If it's not rented at the moment, it's not in Southeast Queensland. If it's not rented at the moment, then you can fix that. But the reality is vacancy rates are 0.01 odd percent. They're, they're tiny. They're not exactly that percentage, but they're very, very low. We're not seeing vacancy rates anywhere above that 
percent type of situation. And we run and manage a significant property capital business. Elk Realty and Capital, our property capital management business, looks at your property, manages it like our own, and then drives the return on investment, drives that ROI, looks at how we can save you money. Why would you pay seven, eight percent to a manager when you can get the same or equivalent for six point seven five percent? Maybe better depending on your assets you, you have with us. So you're going to save 25%. If you could save 25% on anything, wouldn't you look at that? If it's a, an essential kind of service, uh, essential service, that's a common term. We're all essential services. That's why we're open. I might get my mask. No, joking. It's getting late. I'm getting a bit haywire. Um, so with that, the, um, the property capital management, saving money, Elk can offer 6.75%. We pay rent weekly. So we put more cash flow more regularly through your offset account. Why not look at that? We have a team, the team that is mobile, that gets across on the ground and then has systems, allows us, and by the way, we get audited regularly, four times a year, get someone looking with a torch. I could be funny and rude, but I won't. Um, at everything they need to, rightly so. And we have our Australian Financial Services Licence, which is audited two times, uh, both on a compliance, financially and a compliance for process. We have our Australian credit license, so we're getting looked at everywhere. And yet we see people go, oh, look at that shop front, that real estate agent. We'll go deal with them. Okay. And I've met some of them and I wouldn't give, I don't know, I wouldn't give them my plant to look after. I mean that respectfully because there are a lot of good ones, but there's some shonky shit ones. Excuse me. Nowhere near the infrastructure, that's for sure. And I'm not, I'm making, I'm not making comments to my peer. I'm making comments to the general. So, guys, deal with the right people to manage your property capital that are responsive and they can put more money in your pocket and drive your role. So with that, that means that they've integrated an investment vehicle worth 500,000. Now, how is that different to what they're doing before? Well, before they had nothing and now they've got an asset worth 500,000. And that's growing your asset pool because as I said before, there's only so much $250,000 can do. And now if you grow your investable assets to 500 or well, plus 500, 750,000, well, wait a second, that's a better position. Now, you've borrowed against that, you borrowed 100%. That's in that situation, the right way to do it. If you put cash towards something, that's gonna affect your ROI because that extra contribution affects and reduces your return on investment. And that's why at this point in time, if you're not motivated enough to do it, you need to look hard at why. Because interest rates are at record lows. You can take control back from the bank, integrate another investment vehicle or an investment vehicle. And why I said another is I'm looking at this and going, well, what about all our other clients, our well clients have got existing investment vehicles, two, three plus, and we're not over the top, we, we get it right. What we do is we build a strategy and that strategy is built on, and you may know this barbell portfolio. We're all big weightlifters, pumping, pumping iron, no, no. Barbell portfolio, imagine Tokyo Olympics, we see that and paying homage to those Amazing Turkish weightlifters, they're doing the weights. Now, in front of them, on that bar, they've got a big weight on the left-hand side. They might have a couple of big weights. So our existing old clients might have a couple of big weights, or three, perhaps, maybe more, on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, they've got a couple of smaller assets or a collection of smaller assets, smaller weights. Now, what the left-hand side of the bar is there to do is large, low-cost core holdings, property assets. The right-hand side of the bar is the usual suspects of liquid and other investments. Australian shares, international shares, listed property, all that good stuff in their super, perhaps a bit outside if they can do it, and growing it. And we're gonna go down that pathway in just a moment in terms of part 1.1 of your super world. But why I'm saying is we build a portfolio unlike anyone else you deal with, and that's why Elk, because we are without peer. Our licenses and expertise runs deep. We can build your portfolio that allows you to put in place a strategy across your total financial world. That big circle, we own that. And then across your total strategy, your total world, we build a strategy. That barbell, it's there to grow your asset pool because you need to, because there's only so much 250,000 can do. There's only so much 500,000 dollars can do. And if it's gonna work its ass off and get 12, 15%, it can't do that all the time. And if it does, be ready for an up and down ride, or maybe pull it back a bit and grow your asset pool and be a bit more a bit moderate about your approach. It'd be smoother, more enjoyable, unless you like that kind of thing. 
There's nothing wrong with that. I, I often, no, I won't get out there. That's a Saturday night type of discussion. Joking. So investment vehicle barbell portfolio. In your personal world, we're currently adding a weight bang to the left hand side of the bar. Big heavy weight, great. Because at the moment, interest rates are so low, 1.82% fixed. So if you're looking at integrating an investment vehicle into your financial world, you wait a second, I can do that at what, two odd percent? Previous it was three odd percent. Three percent is still a fantastic rate. Two odd percent, lock it in, Eddie. And then you go, well, what's the rental yield? Well, the rental yield is what? Six percent, five and a half percent, five percent plus. Are you getting that? If not, call Elk. Hello? <laughs> and speak to me about, speak to Elk about how we help you get better investment yield. You need it because more cash flow more regularly. And I haven't even touched on the tax savings yet. Tax savings in a low interest rate environment is hard because most people think, oh, I'm gonna borrow the money, I'm gonna negative gear. Yeah, do that, okay. Well, how about your negative gear for the tax benefits and put some positive cash flow around it? That means your asset, that thing we're looking at in the screen there, that balanced investment vehicle has depreciation. And that depreciation helps ensure for the next 40 years the next 10 years in particular, if it's a new asset. And there's gonna be a lot of other features it satisfies. So don't just jump on a new, new asset bandwagon. If you've got depreciation and you've got interest cost, then you've got a, the tax saving part of a balanced investment vehicle. And you can start to save tax. And then, well, rather than in four grand like this, or maybe more, and if rates go up, it's gonna be more because interest is tax deductible. And that's the benefit, that's certainly the benefit of investment debt. So for our existing L clients, how can you pay down your home loan and then do a thing called debt conversion? I'm just conscious I'm gonna get a wind up soon from Daryl. I haven't even got to stream two. I'll get to it in a moment. Uh, Daryl, our beloved CEO, has put a lot of effort in here and I was gonna give him a shout out, maybe wake him up. Daryl, no. So in terms of how can you debt conversion, smash that debt, so that home loan debt that's non-tax deductible. And then go, wait a second, well, I'm building up equity, I'm paying down home loan debt, I'm saving money. How? By putting all your income, all your rent, all your tax savings. And rather than getting a tax saving just at the end of each year, it's smarter to get your tax back and you pay when you get paid. That's called a 1515 PAYG tax variation form. It allows you to put your, so you get tax back and you pay. How? you pay less tax. So just say your tax rate's 28%, you or 32%, you, I'm gonna pick a numbers. <laughs> Where'd those numbers come from me? I don't know, I just picked them. Um, so no, they're tied back to tax rates. So from there, we go, well, we've now got rent, interest, and depreciation. That means your tax income comes lower. So we pre-lodge your tax return in the form of a 1515 tax variation form. That then means you get tax back in your pay. How? Well, your paymaster goes, wait a second, I've been taking this much tax. I actually don't do that. I need to take this much tax. You get more money. That's a great outcome. You put that money through your offset account. You don't spend it because that money came only because of the investment vehicle through the offset. So tax savings, income in the form of rent, rising rental incomes. Because as I said, our investment vehicles are hitting 5% plus. We're seeing 6%. We're seeing 6.3%. Six months paid in advance. If you don't want to at least look at that, open the door, go, oh, that's, that's not too bad. I thought it'd be much, much darker than that. that um, um, like, you know what I mean? like, open the door, have a look, speak to us and see what that pathway looks like. Back to existing your clients. I'm, I'm, I'm dazzling you. Sorry, uh, I'm going off track. Back to existing your clients. We've got a situation where we're trying to smash debt. You've got built up equity in your home. Good. But you have built up equity also in your investment vehicle. Because often we're paying debt down in our investment vehicle structure, that loan, that loan's principal and interest. The benefit of the rent yields at the moment, the levels at the moment, versus mortgage payments is you can pay the principal and interest repayment as well. So the loan's getting paid down from the rent and the tax you save. People might go, well, oh, the cash flow gets a bit tight. Well, have you got your tax variation form in place? No. Have you got interest rate review? Um, are you doing it? Are you speaking of us? Are you reacting to our contacts to make sure you're reducing that rate? We may have not got back to you. 
contact us. We will get in contact with you. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's all of us working together, trying to manage and get ahead. And how that works is, can you reduce cost in your investment vehicle? From there, you've got a situation where your loan's being paid down. You're reducing the principal on your loan. So you're building up equity. That means, like a lot of our old clients have done, like a lot of our old clients have done, they go, wait a second, I've got now equity in that property. I can then do that again and get a snowball effect. More rent, more tax savings, another $500,000 asset. Used to be 400, used to be 450, it's now 500. I hope I'm not doing these webinars in 20 years time, God forbid. It'd be 800. Property is a long-term asset, but one thing is sure, the trend is a slow and steady wins the race, will sometimes spike, but it's always going upwards in the most part. It's a cycle, no doubt. And it might sit there in locations that might have a bath effect. Like you know, imagine you're in a bath and it's a big bath. It takes a while for the water to hit the sides because all that land or all that um, and globo, which is planned and developed with billion dollar infrastructure either in place and then continuing, then fills and then it starts to rise. The bath starts to fill. This takes time. So that balanced investment vehicle grows in value, loan comes down, you've got equity. We then take that purple square that was on the home, we put it in the equity of the investment and go, well, I can do something else and you need to. Of course, let's not forget the why. For all the excitement of the last five minutes, I'm excited, I hope you are, um, that the tax you pay, the mortgage cost and the retirement shortfall needs to be managed. If you own your numbers, have a plan in place, you better do that. And the plan should be built around what we've just proposed. It's a foundation. And that foundation then means we add another weight to the left-hand side of the bar. And that might be in your personal world, or it might be just in a moment, we'll touch on the smart way to invest in property using super. But that's not for everyone. So make sure you meet the criteria and we get that right. But in your personal world, if we grow that assets, those assets on the left, and grow the assets on the right, we're gonna to get to a situation where you can have or be as close to what you need for your retirement. You would have in those weights over here that have got loans, paid those loans down over time. They've got rising market values over the medium to long term, including rising rents. You might choose to sell one of those assets and help path your home loan. That's an option. If you certainly got nothing else there as another weight, well, you're without that asset again. So you gotta make sure you've got money in the market. So the key outcomes for our client in this situation, conservatively, conservatively is, of course, we had more cash flow going through and against the home loan. Over the period of seven years, including with a reduction on rates, as well as directing their cash flow, identifying, hey, in your living expenses, you've got this opportunity, save seven, we save seven years on the mortgage. Seven years. That's $163,000 in mortgage payments saved. And the tax saved because of low interest rates, because it was a right asset though, was 4,300. Take that depreciation away and most people are left paying tax because the rent's at 5% or 6%, not all clients, let's say the rent's at four and a half, five percent for open market. They've got property management fees, they pay that might be too high. Uh, they then pay interest and they've got no other real tax deductions of that asset. They might not be structured right uh, as well. There's other considerations and they missed tax savings. So they earn the money, they pay the tax and they can't get it back, can't get it backwards. Got to look forward and have a strategy to fix it. So with that, on our L clients, I just want to make sure that you walk away. The, the clients that have got bars, weights on the bar, can you look at continually measuring what your asset position is, what it's worth, the loan amount, the equity, look at the cash flow, make sure you're doing all the right behaviors in terms of tax savings. And you might be able to afford to get tax as a lump sum refund, which is good. In some risks, it's for saving, you drop it in. But from a managing of cash flow perspective, reducing interest rates, getting the right rental yield, and putting your tax savings in place to get it back weekly, monthly when you get paid, is the smarter way. It smooths things out. Then can you grow your assets by acquiring additional assets? To a point, there'll be a point where you go, you know what? We're at our capacity of credit worthiness, not maximum credit worthiness. Go, let, let's peel off that. Let's focus on smashing cash flow. Sorry, smashing debt. Pay off the home loan. Once your home loan's gone, what do you do with that mortgage payment? Keep it going to the investments. 
pay off their depositing costs or the investment. You do what a lot of our clients have done is build up equity and pay down debt in their investments or pay them off their investment properties. Especially as you get closer, where those other expenses go away, you can smash it. And the benefit is you've got the asset pool there to do it, where the rents have rose, the values have rose, and the loans have gone down amortized over time. So I'm gonna, as I said, 8.30 wrap up uh, to make sure that um, we get through everything properly. So we talked about part 1.1 personal world. And we've said, hey, stra strategy, structure, and solution. That strategy then has a portfolio and that's described as a barbell. On the left-hand side in your personal world, we've said, let's add a weight to the bar. Maybe you add two or three. You might be in that situation. Well done. Make sure you look at the assets. So my points on that is let's do an assessment. Let's check values, loans, cash flow, tax savings. Please contact us so we can do that. And we can tweak it, drive it better, drive the return on investment. And then on the right-hand side, you've got your super. That's what it looks like in the most part. And that super, well, what can you do with your part 1.1a world? Let's go to that now. Guys, thank you for listening on this first part. I'm now gonna quickly exit this, get into my other screen and go from there. Hey, that wasn't too bad for an old guy. Uh, so future-proof yourself. What's that mean? Well, it means have the money you need when you need it. And the smart way to invest in property using super is one of the subtopics we're gonna talk about and really drill down on. Now guys, don't fall asleep. Super is exciting. It really is. No, I'm joking. No, I'm not. Super is exciting. So who is Elk? We know. That's Elk. That's who we are. Elk is a brand, the things we do for people. We love you. Then from there, general disclaimer. Let's get to the nuts and bolts. And I'm going to make this time quicker than that. To be smart at anything, you need to be knowledgeable. Most Australians say super is too complex. So let's fix that. In two minutes or less, you'll understand super. In five minutes, you'll understand why you write to dislike super until the day you take control of it. In 10 minutes, you'll understand why it's smart, if I haven't already talked about that already. You'll understand why it's smart to use super to invest in property. So this part, why is it smart to use your super to invest in property? Not all of it, then get it and go buy a property. And we've got to get the strategy and structure right. In 15 minutes or less, you know how to take control of it. In 18 minutes, you know which option best suits you. In 20 minutes, you know where to find me. I'm here um, in order to talk through that. So contact us to have a meeting. I just lost my controller for a sec. Okay, understanding super. Making simple, making super simple is smart. That's, that should be a tongue twister. Super made simple is smart, super. Super made simple is smart, super. I got it. Super, superannuation is simply an environment that is for compulsory savings. You get a tax break for it. So super is an environment. This here is an environment. That's your personal world, that's an environment. This is your super world. So the benefit of super is you get tax breaks, pay lower tax. The government encourages you to save for your time because you need to. It's gonna become more and more prevalent. People need to look at that. So you can actually save and build yourself a nest egg. Contributions can be from your employer or they can be your own. Okay, so when you look at super, there's two pathways. There's the do-it-yourself option, self-managed, or there's the public offer funds. They're the retail offer funds or the government type funds we see. So Q Super, Australian Super, Sun Super, all good funds serving a purpose. Okay, so why do you need to take control though? Why? Don't just look at these numbers, think about you. You've got to get what you need for your retirement and to let someone else just manage it and just let it happen. If you don't have enough invested and even if you've got a decent sized asset pool, you need to own it, take control of it. You may decide, no, I've got 300 grand, but self management fund is not for me. Okay. Pathway, uh, other pathway to you is control it, build a portfolio that's built for you, understand what that portfolio does, use investment expertise from people like me, Elk, and then there's a whole other stuff behind that. So it's not just me, how you look at me, a um, lot more goes into it 
to then put in place a portfolio that does what you need for your retirement or gets as close to. The big problem there is if you've only got so much performing at 10%, it's going to fall short unless you do other things. You might be able to make additional contributions. You might be able to make sizable additional contributions, but still you may be trying to save for your retirement, which may not be enough. So what we're saying here is let's look at how you can get enough assets in the market because we've just seen that most if not all not all there are certainly people that don't have this situation but most working Australian households will have a shortfall for their retirement and unless they have a plan in place to fix it then it's going to remain a shortfall and then the plan to fix it might be additional contributions or choosing investment managers or choosing planners advisors because they say I can do this let's just peel all that back look at it for what it is you got this much money, no matter if someone gets two or three, or half, a point, half a basis point better, one or two basis points, one or two percent better, make, it will make a difference. But will it make enough of a difference to get you where you need to be? Fees are an important consideration, of course. But your strategy is where it starts. And if you can put a strategy in place that allows you to have enough assets in the market, well, some of the wealthiest people I've known over time have had savings and grown on that because of the size of that, that savings, they've been, or, uh, or the size of the assets has given them growth and additional assets. It's compounded. So it just puts them almost in an unfair position because they've got this much to start or they've got this much and it returns five or 6%, which is like 18% of someone with only this much. So growing your asset pool is a smart way to use your super. And the smart way to invest in property is to use your super. Why? Because tomorrow, one dollar in every 10 you spend is going to go to the super environment. Did you know that's actually, there's 2.7 trillion TR. It's a big number on the screen in Australian super. That's why everyone wants a slice of it. With that though, there's some issues, of course. Only one in five Australians actually know how much super they'll need. 60% don't know and 20% can't give an amount. So only one in five are able, able to accurately predict how much they need for their suit for retirement. So from this, for your listening, if you're not listening, you've passed out. If you're gonna look at this later with our video recording, send us your numbers. Let us see what it means. And we can say, hey, project it out, compounded, this return, you know, this much. You're gonna be short. Wouldn't you like to know that? Um, and then we can look at, well, what are your options? We're not gonna jam it down your throat because you're all concerned. No, but at least we'll give you a credible link to quality information. Almost a third of Australians have more than one super account. Okay, some, for some reason that's okay. Otherwise, consolidate, look at reducing fees. There's lost super, right? there's a lot of lost super, I think it's like $13.8 billion, so maybe more actually. I'll get to that number in just a moment. Uh, 13.8 billion, yes, I was gonna say trillion. $13.8 billion in lost super. So guys, what that shows is that there's a lot of super, it's your money, you need to take control of it and know what it's doing. So as an average across our ELK members, and this is not what our ELK members are paying to us, it's our ELK members and their approximate super balance. There's about $725 million in super in those ELK, mum, in, in those ELK members' superannuation funds accounts. This means to other super funds or to super funds, they're paying 10 billion per year in fees. By 2025, that's 13 mil. And for that, you'd want value for money. 42% of Australians, it's a lot, probably come back just a bit in the last couple of years because people are looking at a bit more, but 42% of Australians have money, have, have lost super. So that's your money out there floating around. Let us help you find it. Let us help you consolidate it. Speak to us at least. So, in terms of that super pathway, let me just, before we get to these numbers, we identified that in your personal world, putting in place a portfolio that inc included integrating an asset such as direct property had benefits. And that was when you borrowed 100%. Still the rent and the tax savings allowed you to pay that debt down, helped you pay for your home loan, and gave you an asset over the meaning of the long term that will grow in value. 
Now, in your super world, my question is, if you know that you've got 250,000 or 180,000 or 120,000, and you know you've got 25 or 30 years left, you might have a bit more. You might have 350,000. And you know that in 15 or 20 years, it's gonna be worth X and it's short for what you need. If you don't know, contact us so we can tell you what you need. So you identify the gap, the issues and deficiencies. But in the most part, there is a shortfall for retirement. How are you gonna fix that? When was the last time you saved 400 grand? There's a few clients I know that have done that, done that well to buy a new home and things like that. It takes big earn to do that. And perhaps lower expenses. When was the last time you saved 400 grand? Or could you do it smarter? And go, well, why don't we just do what we're gonna do in the personal world, in the super world? And there's a number of benefits for it. Firstly, if you've got a couple hundred grand or $250,000 in super, that's not just the, the only requirement. We need to make sure you've got the financial resources, so the balance and income, the contributions. You've got to have the right drivers. Why are you doing it? Is it just to buy property? No, you, you, want to, you need to take control of your super. You need to want to take control. You want to do or get access, to do things that you can't do in your current super fund. Get access to benefits you can't get there. Your behaviors, you must be good at your paperwork. At least keep it in order. Have an interest in it. Manage it. And literacy, have the right financial literacy to understand it. And if you do, then this is the pathway you should look at. Because the 10 year average return on super in balanced at 2020 was, so as at 2020, the 10 year average return for a balanced fund, no matter what the fund is an average, was 6.5%. For growth, it was 7.8%. And for property, it's 10.2, 20 years return. 20 years. So it's gone longer to prove its performance. So why property makes sense is you probably get that I like to talk. And I, a few years back, talked in front of quite an audience, a few thousand people, along with one of the major financial commentators uh, on TV, celebrity apprentice type stuff, cool guy, um, very well known. Him and I were the keynote, speaker, keynote speakers. With that, this is one of the topics I touched on and presented. And I commissioned a report that time through one of the main and very good research houses in super and property assets to look at what would happen and what is the effect of integrating property. So if you've got a super fund, what if I integrated direct property, just laid it in? So if I had 250 grand and I started incrementally increasing the value of that, what would it do to performance? What would it do to volatility? And the performance and the figures are sexy. I just thought I'd squeeze that in. Wake you up. Um, so 829, we're getting there. Guys, what the effect of residential property is on a typical balanced super fund? Now balance you think is 50-50, it can be. In most situations, it means more like 60-40 or even 70-30. 70% growth asset, so shares, listed property, 30% defensive. So fixed interest, trying to defend, protect. And what happens is if you add property to a typical balanced fund, it both increases performance and reduces volatility. Why? Well, property is a smoother ride. And for the last 20 years, it's been better performing. So with that, that's why, hey, wait a second. What if we had all the right parameters satisfied? We go, well, let's look at taking that super, the one that we've got in a couple of different funds and moving it to a self-managed fund. It might be the ANA Smith superannuation fund where Anthony and Antoinette have decided to pool their resources and open a self-managed fund. It's simply opening a super fund. There's a lot of considerations. We'll talk you through that, of course. It's a self-managed superannuation fund that then has a bank account. We roll that money into that bank account worth 250,000. There's a lot of things we need to do to make sure we get that right. And you're across all of that. And we make it simple. And we have the right experts and accountants. And in that $2.7 trillion, by the way, 
the most popular asset, the most popular place for that money is self-managed. So there's a lot of people that do this, a lot of money in that market. A lot of help, and it doesn't mean you have to be an investment expert. It just means you have to have the right kind of attitude. And that means all of a sudden you've got 250,000 you can take control of. Key note, everything you use that money for must be for retirement, nothing else. You can't get access to it personally, you don't wanna go near that. It's only for your retirement. And you take that approach and you build a strategy for that purpose. And that strategy, hey, barbell, love doing weights. We go, wait a second, let's put on the left-hand side of the bar another weight. Because in our personal world, we've got a weight there, but we know that's a first step. We might have a couple of weights. That's getting you closer. It's perhaps not gonna be enough. You gotta check and measure, check and measure. Remember these numbers are also conservative. Living costs are going up. You don't wanna be short. You gotta make sure you got enough. So you take steps and continually manage it. Okay, wait a second, in our super, what if we use a portion of that money, only a portion, remember that equity square on the full client model graphic? As a deposit, to assist you to buy or acquire an asset to integrate into your super. So the super fund owns it. It's in the superannuation's name. And the cash flow is to the super. And so remember that client example I gave of $16,000 in super guarantee contributions? And let's say it's a $500,000 asset, that's about $25,000 in rent. So about 38 odd thousand dollars or thereabouts in, um, in rent, sorry, total cash flow. A bit more actually, sorry, it's been, been a long day. So rent plus super going in. That cash flow going into your super guarantee, sorry, going to your super fund is strong cash flow. And we're not just all about, hey, one lumpy asset, a large low cost property on the left, what all that cash left over? And in this example, let's just say the property is worth 500,000. And credit worthiness, looking at all those right parameters, the deposit, you need is 30%. So you're borrowing 70%, that 30%. So the difference in your super mortgage, you're, you're turning up with a large cash deposit. If you rocked up to an auction, and don't do that in super, just step away for a moment. If you had a 30% cash deposit and rocked up at an, action, an auction, put that down, bang, I want this property, and got a loan for the difference, you'd expect that property would almost look after itself, wouldn't it? Well, you'd expect it to look after itself, that the rent would cover the payments. And the super guarantee contributions and the payments would certainly cover it and cover the expenses and give you a surplus cash flow that can use to pay the debt down. We can get to the point of having a debt-free property come retirement. And right at this point in time, and historically it's been the case, but based on current legislation, if you are in pension phase with your superannuation, so you accumulate, accumulate, work hard, grow your super, and go, okay, now I'm gonna retire. I'll go to pension phase. Hey, bang, one step ahead. Pension phase. That means that you could sell that property in your super, capital gains tax free, exempt. In your personal world, you don't have that benefit. So you have to pay capital gains tax. That's, you made a gain, it's good. Imagine you can do that in your super board without paying the tax. So that makes it a very uh, feasible and certainly something to at least look at opportunity. And again, we're not just about the left-hand side, having a barbell weight. So having property in your super on your barbell on the left-hand side. We're going, well, 250, less than 30% deposit, have over $100,000 left over or thereabouts. Four, investment. So the first thing you do is we identify liquidity. We identify a slice of money that we keep for liquidity to be able to meet the obligations. And the cash flow is based on your resources. So you could have good income, good contributions. And liquidity might start a bit lower, but you grow it. And from there, you pay down that debt. So you're building equity in the property. You get rental yield to help you, your contributions to help you. And you've still got that cash left over. Well, you can leave it in the bank. Some uh, lenders for self-management funds that provide an offset account. And that money seeing an offset can save you interest and help you pay that debt more quickly. But that's a really simple plan. We're gonna miss open market forces and really good assets if we just do that. So on the right hand side, the barbell, we need to get that other money working. We need to look at those, that amount and cut it up into different weights on the bar. 
Australian shares, international shares, listed property, fixed, fixed interest, cash. And how do you do that? Well, one way to do it would be to look at a wrap. So your Selvany Super Fund's its own entity. It's got a property now, it's got a loan against it. The loan's 70%, the rent's coming in, paying that loan down. You've got contributions going in to help that if needed. And from there, you've got surplus cash flow that can be directed for future investment. And you've got surplus cash for future investment. Your cash flow, your surplus cash to start with might be minimal. You need to grow. And there's measures and we check along with the lenders, make sure we get that right. And then go from there. And the benefit is, even if you've got one or two assets in your super fund, and the seconds meant that you've got a certain amount of stringent cash left over, still maintain liquidity, that you focus on reducing debt and allowing those assets to work and grow over the medium to long term. But then back to my main point, that right-hand side. We've got to grow that right-hand side. And so by putting that to work in those other assets, that mix of usual suspects, that helps you grow that out. Because what this graph shows, the optimal number and the effect of it is, if we can get to 50%, 50% residential property, 50% other assets, that's the optimal blend to reduce volatility and maximize performance. Now you have to start low on that in terms of uh, other, you have to start at a higher percentage of residential property. So lower percentage of other assets to start with in, the most, in most cases. Of course your deposit contribution needed will mean that you've got a, maybe an 80% or even 90%, 70 odd, where you'll see in that spectrum is subject to you and your numbers in residential property, but still a good amount of liquid assets left over. And even if you're at 780 or 70, 80 or 90%, you're still washed. When you move away from the 50, 50, whilst your volatility is lower than it was or would be if it was just in the usual suspects of assets and the performance is still higher. If you move away from 50, your volatility starts to creep up a bit. So you're getting more what's called uh, correlation. So you've got more of one type of asset that, market fluctuations mean you're, you're correlated uh, in terms of movements. Whereas if you can spread it, property and other assets are not, co not correlated. So Australian shares has a very low correlation if almost it's ins insignificant to property. So we get to that number because if it's at 80%, you've got property. So any movement of property will affect your volatility. But if you can spread it and get to a point where you've got that 50 50 over time that's the optimal mix so that's what we're trying to get to we start where we need to to get on that journey because why more assets in the market is the why growing your assets and starting with instead of 250,000 maybe 575,000 with property plus cash after costs means you have more money more net equity even when you get some borrowing, because we look at all the cash flows and that's what the numbers show. That's what performance shows. That's what our client's history shows. And that's here. So if I can just ask you this, and we'll round off and finish on this. And thank you very much for your time. If I've got $250,000 in super today, and you've got 575,000 in super today, which one's going to be more, worth more in 20 years' time? It's not a true question. Even with borrowing leverage in place, because of the cash flows, a 575,000 will have more net equity than obviously 250,000. And you'll see in the calculations here, 250,000 have to work harder at 7.8%. I've been able to scale the numbers back and go, wait a second, we don't have to work that hard. We can afford to be a more slow and steady wins the race top approach at 6.8%. More money in the market, compounding at a lower rate, gives you more money. So guys, contact Elk to find out what that means to you. And if you think it doesn't suit you, if you feel, wait a second, I don't have the parameters, or maybe it's just not something I'm comfortable with, well guys, let us show you or share with you how you can put in place a portfolio that's tailored to your situation. And it's like a funnel. We look at the universe of investments and we put it through the funnel 
and we start to narrow down against what our uh, investment philosophy is and then what your obviously your needs are of course and then we look at research houses and some of the biggest in Australia, Lonsec, Zenith, Morningstar. And we have a traffic light system, red, no, amber, no, not now, green, yes. And then we combine that to find titanium gold, what pops out the bottom. And we look at those investments based on historical performance only for one part. It's, a, it's, a, it's an idea about what they can do going forward. If you've been winning five or six soccer games, you've been losing five, well, at least if you've won five, it means you, you can do it. But then what's your capacity now? what's your asset class, what's your mandate, to make sure that's right. And then from there, are you positioned to continue to deliver that? And if we get comfortable on that, then we start to look at presenting that to you. And we can share with you how you can put in place strategies and investments that are perhaps as compared to what you currently got, can deliver you a better return and put you in a better position. And it might be that we farm it. We, we put it in, in the pen to farm and grow and harvest and go, wait, you're now at a point where you can do this. You can actually look at the other pathway because it suits you. Or might be we just continue on that pathway and grow it. So for all of this, it's a simple plan. Our role is there to make it as simple as possible for you and to make sure you've got a credible link to quality information about your situation. In closing, thank you indeed and thank you very much for your time. Uh, if I can leave you with something, how do you harvest your equity to transition to retirement? If you're not sure, contact Elk. How do you make sure you get that right? Lost super search, consolidated super, projections regarding retirement, a quick mini financial needs analysis. So what's your financial health? What's the wealth of it? So what's your financial wealth health? And then a report showing it. Elk loans interest rate challenge. Can we save you on interest? And then guys, I look forward to being in contact and meeting with you in a personal one-on-one -on -one type of situation. And on behalf of the team, the guys that are here, showing on my screen, that are here this evening, supporting, and we're gonna to continue to make this an important medium for delivery of our services, our intellectual property, our expertise to our ELK members and, and the Australian public and general business community. But I'd like to thank you for working with us. Thank you for your custom. The last 16 years, it's our 16th anniversary just recently, and uh, we're gonna make the next few years the best yet and helping people have the life they deserve. So thank you very much. I'm going to finish sharing the screen and I hand over to my production wizard, Daryl. Thank you and good evening. Thanks, Ian, for that. Thank you very much, Daryl. Uh, I'll uh, bring the meeting to an end, or if you would like to do that, I'd like to thank the team, the Elk team, for being part of it. Yes. And uh, wish everyone a good evening. I'll, uh, I'll close off, and then um, we'll be in contact. Cheers, guys. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks. thank you, everyone, and thanks uh, especially uh, to Ian for uh, that great presentation. We got a, a lot of uh, good information uh, from it, and uh, it does, uh, uh, you know, inspire us to see what we can also uh, do in our own lives to, uh, uh, to reach our own financial goals. We're helping people uh, every day uh, with what uh, ELK does. And um, it's uh, one of the things that drives us to make people uh, uh, a little bit more uh, financially independent, but also keeping them on the, the main path to their uh, financial goals. So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And uh, we'll see you uh, later. And uh, please take care, especially during this time with the COVID. And uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon. And thank you for the guests that uh, came and visited us tonight. I thank you for your, you know, your, your uh, uh, coming. And uh, we hope to see you again, and even more. Thank you, everyone. And have a good evening. I'll be ending the me meeting now. Good evening, mate. Well said. Thank you. Everyone have a good evening. Goodbye.